Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Indy's Trusted Servant Show on InspireSmall.biz with your host, Danny O'Malley, Indy's Trusted Servant. Uh, thanks to Ryan Henry for hosting these YouTube interviews every Monday at 3 o'clock. What is Indy's Trusted Servant? Well, that's me, Danny O'Malley. I do customer service training and keynote speaking about customer service and organizational culture, which leads to the kind of service you're going to give. Uh, I learned all of that from the hand of the master, my late father, Joel O'Malley, uh, back in the O'Malley food market days, but even before that, when I was about nine or ten years old, and he had a little grocery store in Broad Ripple that he actually lost. Long story there. But one of the things I learned was, ten years later, he came back and successfully opened O'Malley's, and so I learned never, ever, ever give up. Um, What's the Indies Trusted Servant Show on InspireSmall.biz? I like to describe it as lively local small biz and community talk where you can feel the pulse of Indy. And today my guest is one of my favorite retailers in Indianapolis, Pat Sullivan of Sullivan's Hardware. Um, and I have a big connection to Sullivan's Hardware. From about 1961 to 1965, my dad ran the second Preston store of what later became Preston Safeway on the exact site of Sullivan Hardware. That's right. I have to say that uh, it was about half the size of what Sullivan Hardware is today. So without further ado, Pat Sullivan, welcome to the show. Dan, good to, good to be here. Well, give everybody a little bit about the Pat Sullivan story, your background, where you went to school, what you studied, and how you became Sullivan Hardware. Well, uh, you know, my father started the business in 1954, and we were downtown on East Washington Street. Is that right? Yep. And then in 54, we like to say he moved, or in 63, we say he moved around the corner up to 71st and Keystone. So at that time, you got to remember, Keystone dead-ended at 96th Street. So it was kind of the, the 86th edge of town. Street, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So edge of town, uh, and uh, we moved into a, a new little development that was owned by the Knights of Columbus. Now, this before you opened the store on 49th Street. Oh, nine. Uh, uh, 49th it didn't come along until 96. Oh, okay. So 71st Street came first. 71st, but, yep. But, but before that, I know you went to Chittard High School. I did, yeah. Graduated what year? Uh, 1978. And then what? Uh, you know what? I went to IU. Okay. Uh, I went to school at IU for that was just three days. But Dan, I want to tell you, it was the best three days of uh, my life. Uh, actually, I was there two two weeks, three days of class. Had a great bowling instructor, uh, <laughs> and so pretty much learned everything I needed in two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> in two weeks, and then uh, I got the hell out of there, and uh, you know went back to work. So, you so know. your dad had already opened. The 71st Street store by this time. Well, uh, 71st Street was opened in 1963 uh, on the uh, on the northwest corner, and then in '81 we moved over to where the store is. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. That 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 threw me a little so bit. So that yeah. was yeah. So that yeah. I'm sorry. So we were in a in a where it's currently at Northside Glass has been there since uh, 81. I got you. Oh, okay, now so, I remember that now. Yeah, Seeing so you guys across the street. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, you were thinking about the grocery store. So yeah, yeah. We, uh, we bought that, and after uh, it was the grocery store, became a uh, auto parts store. And Preston's moved their store up to 75th Street. That's right. Yeah, right. Um, so you went right out of high school to the business, No, basically. I went to IU for three days. For three days, I, we got I, that. I think I feel like you're diminishing my... Uh, Your academic career. Academic and college career. But I mentioned my bowling instructor. Yeah. Ooh, really good. Yeah. So, you, you a big bowler today? No. No, okay. <laughs> I'm in retail. <laughs> now, there you go. Well, bowling doesn't take as much time as golf, so... Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's... Uh, Very so, true. So your dad started Sullivan Hardware yep. in, in, you say, in the 50s, but downtown. Downtown, 1954. Yeah. Okay. So then we've been on the corner of 71st and Keystone uh, in two locations from 63 to 81 over on the uh, northwest corner and then moved to the old grocery store uh, in 1981 and then added on to it and then continued to, uh, to grow at that corner. And then you opened 49th and Penn in what year? In 96, we actually had a store in between. We opened a store uh, in uh, 92 at 71st and Binford. Okay. So in an, in an old uh, grocery store over there. Okay. And so that one uh, was open until we really expanded Keystone. They were 2.8 miles apart. Pretty close. I didn't realize yeah. they were that close. 
I really should have watch done that. a little more homework on that one, <laughs> yeah, Danny. You gotta watch I, that. Yeah, it turned out <laughs> it seemed like a world away to me. And then once you got in the car, you realized, man, that's only 2.8 miles away, and I've already signed a lease. So how long was the lease? That yeah, was five years. Oh boy! But we actually were there from '92 uh, to uh, 2005, I think. So the one on Penn didn't open till after '96. Two- yeah. In '96, yeah. okay. Because okay. I was young and stupid. I was in my 30s and uh, really didn't have any money. Uh, didn't have any financing. Uh, seemed like a good good plan. So. Uh, but, now, so uh, how long was your dad involved in the business? Uh, I bought the, uh, the, <laughs> my dad was smart enough just to have the one store. So in 1990, so I, so all the, uh, the new stores were actually the, uh, brainchild of a, of a 30 year old. So, uh, being so yourself. I, yeah. So I was 29 when I purchased the business. Really? Yep. Ironically, my dad, sometimes, you know, we had nine grocery stores. And sometimes he said, man, I, I don't know if I would have been better off to just stay with one. So yeah. I get that. And I tell my buddies in the hardware business, they go, you know, I'm going to open a new store. And I say, you know what? Why don't you lay down until the feeling passes? Gotcha. But well, not, that's not true. You just got to find the right. And you know what? I learned a ton doing. I, I wouldn't change a thing. Eh, maybe a couple things. Uh, and then we, you know, so then we also had a store in Brownsburg. We have a little store in Cicero. You have a store in Cicero? Still. Still, still do. Have one, yeah. Is it, is it right on Main Street at Fish? Yeah, on I've Jackson. been by there. Yeah. Now that I think about it, yeah. So glad it made a great impression on you. Uh, well, it's, so a, it's a tiny store. I'll let store. the uh, the manager know that uh, you, you were they were <laughs> well thought haven't of. Haven't been in there, there yet. <laughs> no, are you still in Brownsburg? Uh, no, you know no, what? That's okay. a, we actually own the property. That uh, you know sometimes uh, things happen, right? It's like so we had a hardware store in there, and uh, Goodwill was looking for a building out there, and they said, "Hey, we're interested in." Uh, you know, in your building. And I, being the smart aleck that I am, I said, Hey, I don't know if you noticed, but we have a hardware store in there. Yeah. Uh, That's with the little people coming out. And so I told them no. And then it's weird at the same time, a Lowe's was opening up out. Okay. And and it's tough for a, an independent hardware store with Lowe's. Right. Right. So we, uh, so I called them back and I thought, you know what, maybe we should talk. And you know what, it was really good deal. So we still, own that property so and they're it's a good your will. tenant. Yeah. That, that, yeah. And they're they're a great group of people to work yep, with. They as really well. are. So uh you guys have a great reputation uh, as O'Malley's did for service yeah, absolutely. and for doing unique stuff. And one of the unique things you've done recently uh was buy that Allisonville nursery. Tell yeah. everybody about that. Yeah, you know what? I was not looking to expand uh really, but there was there there, you know, uh, just a handful maybe less than a handful of businesses that I would, uh, and really for what we had done, if you, we, we backed up, it's like, you know, the, as the box stores came in, it was really hard for independent hardware stores. And I'll give you, a, there was 19 independent hardware stores north of 38th Street in the early 90s. And today there's four. And we own- Does that include like Ace and Carmel? Yep. Yep, yep. Yeah, so there's just, because in the 90s, I realized what was happening to our business was that we were losing some of the contractor business. You know, we couldn't put out the assortment that a Lowe's or Home Depot did. So what we try to do is to be the best at, we pick five things. We're oh. going to be the best at uh, fresh, uh, you know, uh, uh, plants and plant material because that was something we could do better. Uh, we are going to be a leader in uh, mid-price uh, patio furniture. Now, this is at our Keystone store. Uh, we were going to... Uh, uh, really beef up the grill department. We yep. were going to be yep. a, uh, a, a Christmas retailer with artificial trees. And thus the choo-choo train. Right. right? <laughs> and then uh, the last one was fireplaces. And we failed at fireplaces. And it's important that everything doesn't work, right? So fireplaces we failed on. But the other one, so we became a good basic hardware store and then a monster in these other things. And that's how we were able to grow. And then, you know, then we became the... Uh, uh, into the events when the, you know, the next thing after the box stores was the internet, which I still don't think it's going to last. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, then it's, uh, you know, all of a sudden now it's like, okay. So then the, the, our, our theory became our motto. What can we do to get people dressed out of their pajamas and come into our store? So then it became a little more entertainment, uh, you know, cooking classes, uh, you know, big grilling events, and then our trains. And then, you know, so then then we were kind of positioned 
And back to Allisonville, that, I really always loved that business. It's a great piece of property. It was for, It's a 44-year, now it's 46 uh year old business. Yeah. So, and you still call it the Allison Bill Nursery. Yeah, right? because yeah. you know what? There's a lot of equity in that name. So, there is. Uh, I didn't want to just bail out on that. Interestingly enough, uh, when my dad built, bought the little store in Broad Ripple when I was about nine or 10, it's where the Vanguard Bar is now. You know, if you know uh, Broad Ripple on Guilford Avenue. And it, he bought it from Mr. Roth. And I said, Daddy, you're going to put your name on it, right? No. And it's the same thing. Oh, yeah. It's the equity in that name. That name, right? right. Why spend so the money I, on I, it if you're going to bail on it? Right? Yeah, I learned that right away. That name has equity, and uh, the Allisonville Nursery name yeah. has equity, too. But it's good for folks to know that you guys own it, which, of course, uh, all, obviously is going to help your 71st and Keystone store as well, right? Oh, yeah. With product and so yeah, on and so helps, forth. Yeah, it helps, you know, that, that economy of scale, the, you know, the advertising, TV advertising, or radio advertising, all of that. All of that. Yeah. So you didn't mention something that I think you're very well known for, uh, and that is your service. You got a lot of great yep. people working for you. How right. many employees do you have? Uh, when we're at our peak, we have 280. And that's in the summertime, right? Is, yeah, in spring and spring and summer, and then Christmas we have a you know. But you know, really on the roster, I would say uh, probably in that. Uh, 250 range all are those year round. Uh, are those mostly part-timers or it's a, com a combination there's a lot of part-timers you know we have a lot of high school kids we have right. uh they kind of balloons in the spring and summer when the college kids come back right and you know we, we had the same thing at O'Malley's with college kids coming back and high school kids and great experience for those young people to oh work absolutely retail Espe right? especially now with the way the world is and to be able to you know, I always ask when I train high school kids, I'll, you know, I'll stand in front of them and I'll say, uh, by a show of hands, how many of you are going to make Sullivan Hardware your career? Nobody raises their Nobody hand. Nobody raises their hand. Right. And then I go on to tell them what they will learn. Because in a time of where we are with electronics and kids have no skills about, you know, how do you have, how do you uh, interact with a stranger? And, you know, tell me about it. Being able to have, so, you know, whether you're going to be a doctor, engineer, a, accountant, being able to have that skill of being able to talk to someone. And, you know, I think it's going to be more and more valuable as, uh, as we move along. But I'll bet some of those high school kids end up with a career with you, too, right? Uh, yeah. Some of them, yeah. We yeah, had we, the we same held thing. on to some. Yeah, yeah we, had, we had the same thing. And those make some great employees, yeah, right? Absolutely. That's fantastic. So you, one of the things about small biz, we all we all know this, is that small biz just has a tremendous percentage of the working, you know, of, of the working population with right. small biz, right? right. And oh, absolutely. It's always good to know that a Sullivan Hardware will employ 200 to 280 people, depending on the time of year. Right. That's yeah, you don't get the fanfare that you do when you're uh, when you're opening a, uh, a, you know, an Amazon warehouse or something like that, and it's all over the news. They're going to have right. you know, 250 but it adds jobs. Up. Yeah, it's it, like, it, it adds yeah. up. That's great. So is, is any other family involved in the you business? Know, yes, there is. I have actually uh, uh, four of my five children uh, are involved, which is really probably would not have uh, taken the, um, the Allisonville plunge had they had, not been. Had they not been. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, I love my work and I will continue to work, but you know, the it does, uh, you know, it's a little stressful, right? <laughs> it could be a little so, stressful. And as you get older, now, of course, yeah. and we sold our company 21 years ago, but I can't imagine doing what I was doing today. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, yeah. And we had a daughter, our da oldest, uh, or as we like to call her the perfect one. Uh, she was the, uh, food director at Decatur Township schools. So she okay. was feeding 6,000 kids out of uh, six kitchens. Uh, so she really had that skill set to come in and manage the uh, staff as we got bigger. So that has been the real key to uh, me seeing a way out eventually at some point. Eventually. But my sons are so buried in the departments they're in. My son Andrew does a great job with the uh, with patio, uh, which is a massive size. And it, then, it is a massive size. Yeah. Uh, now, do all, did they all work out of 71st Street mostly? Uh, yeah, we do. We actually have a 37,000 square foot warehouse in Nora with 20 employees. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so you've got transportation and so on and so forth, yeah, right? Yeah, we deliver every day. We, uh, and, uh, yeah, there's just a, a lot going on. We have a, uh, uh, when they're not delivering grills and patio furniture and whatnot, at Christmas, we have a, uh, Christmas tree setup business. We don't decorate your tree, but if you buy a tree from us, we will 
take it out to your house, we shape it, we take care of the lights, we put it up, you decorate it, you undecorate it, we pick it up, and you don't see it oh, until really? next year. Yeah. So let, let, let's say somebody is watching the YouTube and says, boy, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. How early do you have to order that up? Um, no, we, we can do them in, you know, we have about 650 trees that we set up right now. Really? And so it keeps our warehouse staff busy. Yeah, uh, but, it, but if I'm the consumer... Yeah. Uh, and I decide to do this uh, uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Would that be too late to call you guys? Uh, I would say it wouldn't be Thanksgiving weekend, but it would end up being in uh, you know around the fifth, sixth, you know, about a week or so. Yeah, but you'd get it before oh, yeah. Christmas, yeah, sure. right? So you could do it even that no, time. No, be of January, year. Danny. But it's like you know what? It's uh, and the prices are slashed. It's easier to buy gifts. So that time of year, uh, it'd be wise to call ahead or stop by ahead. Is there a phone number for that particular service or questions about Sullivan's? Is there a phone number you want to share? Uh, yeah, but uh, does anyone use the phone anymore? Uh, I do. <laughs> I do. All right. It's 317-255-9230. Or back in the day, it was uh, CL5, remember? Clifford. Pat, Clifford. Clifford, Clifford 5. <laughs> I remember C those days. CL5. I'm, I'm older than you. Yeah. <laughs> we have the same phone number. <laughs> or events at SullivanHardware.com. We'll events at Sullivan Hardware. Now, speaking of events, you mentioned the cooking classes. Now, yep. Omaya's used to do cooking classes at our downtown store. Yeah, I remember uh, that. And that was a big part of... Uh, and we found out that when we did cooking classes, people would leave the class, go into the store, and buy the ingredients for the for the recipes. That's right. You don't really have that those kind of products, or do you? Well, uh, we do in the in the fact that we're doing outdoor grilling classes. So it's uh -huh. an accessory. People buy a grill accessory, or maybe you know the amount of rubs and sauces that we sell. You got so we that have, stuff. We have all of that. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, they a lot of times they walk away with. So it. the cooking classes are all having to do with grilling. They all have uh, to do with, uh, generally all have to do with grilling, yeah. And we have a we have a restaurant in our Keystone location, and Allisonville has uh, restaurants that are open six days a week. So we have a professional uh, uh, staff. Of, uh, do you uh, do breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or? We, we do uh, brunch on the weekends, but mainly lunch and dinner. Lunch and dinner, yep. okay. So if you're if you're looking for lunch at 71st and Keystone, yep, stop right. into Sullivan's Harbor. We're out at Allisonville. Right. We have Maggie's Bistro and Sully's Grill okay. at okay. Uh, Keystone. So back to back to the nursery for just a second. Uh, did you maintain a lot of the staff at the at the nursery? Yeah, actually, uh, interesting enough, uh, I had a Chittard classmate, Jacques Schindler, who has worked there for 35, 38 years. So he stayed he on. He kind of runs the thing yeah, for you? Yeah, he stayed on as a general manager. That's cool. Actually, that's he had cool. left. I, we, I you found him, him and drug him back. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Uh, I remember when uh, Marsh bought O'Malley's, they wanted the O'Malley people to stay in the stores. Oh, yeah, right? absolutely. Again, that goes back to that whole uh, keep the name on it, w what that brand is built. That's right. You know, that's, that's, that's very cool. So, um, fireplaces. Um, you guys install fireplaces? No, we, we that was one of our, our our things, but we failed at that, so we don't do anything. Oh, you, with you're fire. out of the fireplace. Yes, yeah, okay. because it just didn't work, and I think it's important to know that you know you keep swinging, right? And everything doesn't work, and that just didn't work for us. So, you know, it, but everything else did. So we we picked five things, and then actually picked up. We have a large gift business now that we did, and that wasn't part of the plan. Okay. And, uh, so uh, a lot of home decor. Allisonville obviously had. A big home decor business. Ah, and, uh, okay. And uh, Keystone does as well. So Sullivan Hardware is a great place to buy gifts. Yeah, uh, if you need, uh, yeah, it's it's a bit of a yeah. I mean, if you need a purse, women's clothing. No, we have <laughs> we have you, not you. I wasn't talking about you, Danny, but I'm just talking. To, you actually sell purses and women's clothes and yes. women's clothing. Yes, at all the locations. No, Allisonville and uh, Keystone, which are the two big stores. Cicero's is. You know, that's the other thing. Now, you probably were smarter uh, than I was, and you had nine stores, and probably a lot of them were alike. Very similar, yeah. up to a point. I have four stores, and they're all different. Yeah. It's really hard to go to, to market with this thing. We have uh, uh, just a pure hardware store in Cicero, Indiana. That's it, yeah. 49th and Penn is a wonderful uh, store that serves Meridian Kessler. They do uh, a nice lawn and garden business with uh, uh, you know fresh green goods, uh, great hardware business. Keystone is a hardware, patio furniture, gift, green goods, uh, events, 
and then uh, Allisonville doesn't have hardware. So right. they're just, but it's they do nursery. have, but they, but we did add hard goods to that. Before with Allisonville, uh, if you bought a tree, they couldn't sell you a shovel. So now you can actually. You're selling shovels. We're selling shovels. Right, there you go. There so, you go. Yeah, so, but it, 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 it worked for us. Well, you know, and then that's, that's an interesting thing. The, uh, what's, I forget the term, uh, but uh, the things that when you bought Allisonville, the hardware store helps you with Allisonville. Yeah. And. Allisonville helps you with the hardware store. Correct. Right. They have strengths in different things. Both both stores have different. Uh, yeah, sy- strengths. symbiotic relationship yes. there. That's that's fantastic. So um, back to let's see. Um, t- talk about the choo choo train because I know my grandkids love the choo choo. I know, train. and you know it's kind of yeah. The the train thing started. You were you a were you an Ayers child? Oh yeah. When you went to the Ayers oh, train yeah. when you were a kid. Oh yeah. So that's yeah. that's kind of how we were brought up. I think uh, everyone realized that's where the real Santa it's was. Where you went to see Santa? Yeah. Yes. Yep. So you got on the little train, <laughs> and uh, so I guess that you know we were doing because we were a big Christmas retailer. And we were doing uh, some Santa night type of thing on Thursdays, and uh, they kind of outgrew, you know. My whole thing, because I have five kids, was I hated to go see Santa because, you know, standing in line. And I thought, well, what could I do to take all of that out of it? The stress of standing in line to see Santa. Yes, yes. So the train thing is, uh, so we had this idea. We found uh, in 2015, we remodeled, we had purchased more property at our Keystone uh, uh, location. And we had this plan that we were gonna have this adventure from the main location to the North Pole in one of these outbuildings that we have at Keystone. Uh, and it's a, it's a whole story. There's, they, they go, they run into trouble and, and uh, find their way uh, out of it and get to the North Pole. But the whole premise of, you know, and I didn't really know what I was doing, quite honestly. But uh, so we buy this train. So the first one, they're trackless trains. So the first one was fifty six thousand dollars. I thought, gee, oh, this What's works. It's a big investment. Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, and but the whole idea is that you're you're booking a train ticket. So the train runs on time. So you don't have to stand in any line if you're if you're on the if you're on the uh, you know ten o'clock train. If you're there at ten o'clock, you're getting on that train now. The experience with this, as we've gone on, it's like, I, quite honestly, I wonder how people actually make planes because it's missed many times as they miss the train. So there's a lot of juggling. But so we promoted this thing in the first year. It's only in its seventh year. So 2015, we promote the thing, promoted it on my radio show and 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 stuff. And and then we're sitting there. You buy your ticket online. The tickets go on sale November 1st at four o'clock in the afternoon. And you might ask why four o'clock in the afternoon and it's like we don't know either but that's just what it is give give us the website to get the tickets for the train sullivanhardware.com and you can't do it till november 1st november 1st okay Okay. halloween train tickets go on sale september 1st that's at allisonville oh four o'clock you got a halloween see there's another thing i didn't know well we own the equipment now so now this thing has grown from one train to seven trains so we have we own seven of these trains so, uh, and I can't, I can't let out all the secrets of this thing, but that very first year, so we promote this thing, you buy the tickets online and at four o'clock we're standing, looking, at, looking at the computer going, is anybody gonna buy a ticket? And we sold 89 tickets the first hour. The first we, year. The first year. The first hour we sold 89 tickets and we were beyond elated. How many kids can get on the train at one time? Four families. So every family gets a little car. So like. 15 people, something like uh, that? Yeah, there's actually, uh, yeah, about 16. Something like that. 16 to 20. Now, you said trackless. Is it still trackless? Yeah. I've always had the perception that there was a track hey, track you know. there. Don't ask me all right. why. We've drawn you into our illusion. And <laughs> there, that's, there, that's there, how it works. There, well, that's the thing, you yeah. know? Uh, so that's in, uh, fantastic. So in 2021, uh, fast forward, sold 89 tickets that first hour. 2021, we sold 1,700 tickets in the first three minutes. And ended up selling almost uh, uh, 4,500 tickets in the first hour. And you, there's about 8,000 tickets. You have to turn people away? Yeah. You do. So yeah. so don't sleep on it. If you want to do the uh, Halloween train. September 1st. September 1st. If you want to do the Christmas train, and that's at Allisonville Nursery. Yep. Christmas train at 71st and Keystone. What's that website again? SullivanHardware.com. 
And that one is you got to go November 1st. November 1st. So right. mark those dates down, because if you miss those dates, yep. your kid might not get on the train, right? <laughs> Yeah, you can buy, you can probably find scalp tickets occasionally. <laughs> that was, we I, actually found somebody scalping our tickets. I, su I suppose it's possible. Yeah. Well, you know, your, innov your innovation has, has captured the imagination, I think, of, and, and the whole shop local movement. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, but, but you know what? And, and I, I appreciate the shop local. But on the flip side, the retailers and the small business, they need to provide something to make people want to shop something local. Something different. It shouldn't be just, hey, I'm local, come buy from me. Right. You still need to earn that business. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, because I, I get turned off a little bit in advertising when people go, hey, you know, uh, we're local, shop here. It's like, no, yeah, why don't, why, don't we, why don't we make it so wonderful that you want to come here? And that's why I did what I did because we, you know, in the 90s when it was kind of slowing down a little bit, uh, because of the big box stores, you know, we had a lot of sympathy business. You know how sympathy business goes. Yeah, yeah. It's like we always bought our hardware from your mommy and your daddy. Yeah. And that's great, but I want people to be excited to come to my store. And so that's kind of our. You're our you're, you're a chip off the Joe O'Malley block. He you know he, he was always coming up with something different. Whether it was a fireplace in the corner right. of the store, yeah. a babysitting room, carpet on the floor, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. He he grew up. Uh, with Kroger, okay, and when he finally got on his own, he said, I want to be as different from those guys right. as I can be, and that's what you're talking about yep. doing. Pat Sullivan with Sullivan Hardware, one of the great re local retailers in Indianapolis. Thanks for being our guest. Give us that website one more time. Uh, SullivanHardware.com. And uh, it, next week's guest will be my good friend from our late, our St. Louis to Montfort Parish, Jeff Utzinger, and he's going to tell how his life was saved by the grace of God when he was out jogging and had a, not a heart attack, but some kind of heart event. Oh, my gosh. And how that has led to life-saving stations all up and down the Monon Trail in Carmel. So tune in next week. Pat Sullivan, great, great to have you. you. Take care. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching this episode of the Indies Trusted Servant Show. If you liked this episode, be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more updates. The Indies Trusted Servant Show is produced by InspireSmall.biz in Indianapolis, Indiana. For more episodes of the Indies Trusted Servant Show, visit www.inspiresmall.biz slash Indies Trusted Servant. Thanks for watching.